Um, who are we talking about next? We are going to talk about FireEye. Oh, gosh. And, and How did I know you would do this? Another Dylan Lewis holding. <laughs> um, now, full disclosure, you own it. Yes. A lot of people in this building like it. Yeah. Um, they have the, this is the, the best bullish, I'll just preface this, uh, they've got the only certification for the federal government of the United States for yeah, something, something. I, I can give you the specifics if you want. If you want to, open yeah, it. let's yeah. do that. Okay. So, uh, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has certified FireEye's multi-vector virtual execution engine and dynamic threat intelligence cloud platform under the Safety Act. I will give you twenty dollars <laughs> to say that again five times fast. Oh God, I couldn't. I no couldn't way. Try. Okay. Uh, and so they you are. You nailed that, by the way. Yeah. Right. I was. I was shocked because I yeah. remember we actually. This is rehashing what we talked about a couple podcasts ago. And I, I stumbled all over Butchered that sentence. It, yeah. it was brutal. So um, they are currently the only company that enjoys that certification. So that's fantastic. That's pretty cool. And basically yeah. what it does is it protects customers of FireEye against allegations of uh, like technological negligence uh, when it comes to acts of cyber terrorism. Okay. So, it's, it's, so it's basically protecting them against any like lawsuit liability, that kind of thing. So Dylan, if Uncle Sam loves them so much, why is their stock <laughs> down so much? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Again, uh, tied to earnings. I mean, that's going to be the theme, I think, throughout the show. Um, in their case, I think it came down a little bit more to them being overly ambitious when they provided guidance last quarter and maybe not realizing that they were going up against some pretty tough comps from the Are they before. newbies to playing the Wall Street earnings projection game? Uh, no, I mean, they've been, <laughs> they've been around for a little bit. I, I think it's, like I said, it's just maybe getting caught up a little bit in not realizing that the previous year's quarter was absolutely stellar, and they landed a very large contract that I think influenced their results pretty heavily. Right. Um, so basically, one quarter ago, uh, they talked about their guidance for this quarter, and you know they said that uh, for eight consecutive quarters, uh, they've raised their quarterly bill- billings guidance, which is one of the main metrics they use. Okay. And um, basically, looking to continue that, they issued uh, guidance of 225 million to 230 million. And they wound up delivering billings of 211 million. So there was that dip there, and it was that five percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you know it is what it is. But you know Wall Street always anchors to those, right? And of course, and th- this is again a company that I think has been struggling a little bit. You know, you, you look at their chart from midsummer or so, and like it's been a pretty precipitous fall. Um, and a lot of the things that were specific to this most recent drop off, uh, the management cited weakness in Europe. Uh, there were some shorter contract lengths. Uh, lower average deals with some of their large enterprise customers. And so, on surface surface level, I think that looks bad. But again, I, I think this kind of goes back to what they were looking at from the previous year quarter. Um, a year ago, they signed a five-year, eight-digit contract with a federal agency. And yeah. so, like that that's huge, particularly when you're looking at billings in the you know, two hundred million range, like that's right. something that will heavily influence your quarterly results, right? And will kind of throw things off. That's so surprising to me because you know, just given the world we live in, and I, you know, J.P. Morgan Chase just had a data breach. That I, I would just think that people would just be throwing money at this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, is the is the bull case still intact? I think so. I, I'm still pretty bullish on it. And again, I own it, and a lot of fools like it. So, um, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But uh, I, I think with this, the story is still intact, right? Um, you know, we're we're talking about with this company is uh, like cybersecurity experts, and we're looking at the macro trend of some of these huge data breaches costing major corporations hundreds of millions of dollars in actual money and right. in you know lost brand equity, basically, right? And so um, they're the best in the biz when it comes to this stuff, and uh, I think it's something that's only going to become a larger problem. So I think they're extremely well positioned, and I think that story is still intact. Um, one of the things that I really like. Is that they're transitioning from a product revenue to a subscription revenue model? Um, so once they have people that are customers, they're getting this recurring revenue, which is obviously fantastic. Right. And I think it offers a lot of stability. So that's something to watch. Uh, one metric that I think is really great and just kind of it's a testament to how good they are in their space. Uh, their customer renewal customer renewal rates are ninety percent. Awesome. Which is fantastic. Uh, real quick before we move on, what about that lovely? Negative, negative, negative. Free cash flow number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're they're turning that around a little bit. I think it was like for, through the first nine months of last year, they were like cash flow negative to the tune of like a negative one hundred and maybe maybe one hundred and thirty million. I mean, are, I assume that are, was capex. I mean, it's just massive investments. Yeah, I'd have to dig into the numbers to be sure. Yeah, but um, and they are cash flow positive uh for through the first nine months. Yeah. So so you're seeing that turn around. Uh, there's a there's a lot of things to be happy about. Obviously, this is not a stock for everybody. Um. 
you need to have a decent risk tolerance to be in this. And it's a small position for me. It's something that I, I think is a great space to be into. Uh, it's something that's going to become a larger issue. And, um, you know, like they're well positioned for that. But again, uh, make sure that it's something that matches what you're looking for in your investments before you dive into it.